Hey, hey, war pugs. So, today, we are closing in on the last of this playlist, on the last of this series, and this is Joe Cat's Crep Guide to D&D 5th Edition on Alignment. And I have said it before and I'll say it again, I am beginning to get sad because I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss this. Um... I wish he had done a series on Pathfinder because that's my that's my preferred game of choice. I don't know why. I've just always enjoyed the whole the whole thing, and that's where my favorite character I've ever played comes from, Jax from Chalaxia. But um, all things considered, alignment is always. I I've played in I've played in campaigns where alignment didn't matter for anything. It was just something that you filled in. But then I played in campaigns where alignment was really, really important. And at one point, um, <laughs> there was there was a game in which everyone that I was playing with had to hand in their character sheets and go down in alignment because they did something really twisted. A paladin, like a paladin, lost his ability to be a paladin. It was a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had that happen to where like a paladin lost, uh, you know, broke their oath. But um, if you have, let me know the story in the description and in, in the comment section down below because, oh man, those were really big. Okay, so let's get into this. This is Joe Cat's Crap Guide to 5th Edition. I am feeling a little bit under the weather today. I ate something. Um, at about lunchtime, and I have not felt right since. It has been a, it's been a day for me, War Pugs. Let's get into it. Here we go. Oh, chaotic good. Best alignment. Just wanted to take a sec for more people to notice and understand this disclaimer. Most importantly, this part, I don't actually want to upset anybody. It's all part of the character, and I hope everyone keeps that in mind. We good? Okay. Everybody likes personality quizzes, right? See what your spirit animal, how burnt of a toasted slice of bread you are, what's your worst trait as an employee based on the brand of cereal you like to buy. Mm -hmm. They're great because most of the time, if you don't like what the quiz results give you, you can look up which answers contribute to what result and just get the one that you wanted in the first place there and then brag go. about it on social media. Wow, would you look at that? I'm such a Slytherin because I'm so cunning, right? <laughs> yeah, well, joke's on you. That was all an intelligent ruse. I'm actually a Ravenclaw. Or am I? Same Ooh. with star signs. They're just vague enough that they can boil down to you're a thoughtful individual who sometimes <laughs> overthinks things and can be impulsive, but in the end of the day wants to do the best that you can for the people you care about while mm -hmm. never settling for the worst possible outcome. And I could say I just described a Libra and they'd eat that shit up like they're a pet that just found some stray cardboard. Luckily Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have any of that dumb personality shit that nerds argue about for hours on the internet in hopes to totally pwn the other side <laughs> with facts and logic or anything. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. An old relic of the past and the easiest way to start fights both on and offline, the D&D alignment chart is its version of a personality quiz that no one can agree on. You've likely uh. seen this tic-tac-toe board being used with pop- I love this tic-tac-toe board. This tic-tac-toe board is the best thing ever. Culture characters being placed in each segment, giving a vague idea of what each of them means. But then all it takes is for you to put someone in the wrong place, and then everyone starts throwing fists as if they had just found out that you use their facial hair razor to shave your butthole. Remember, characters can only be one alignment forever, and must only ever do things considered to be that alignment, because thinking about character death and development is hard, and when people disagree with me, I take it as a personal attack. More importantly, <laughs> as a player, you get to say what your character's alignment is, and no one can ever debate that you're not playing that alignment, because you know your character better than they do, and they're just jealous and wish their scrubby sheet was as cool as yours, so they can suck fat nards. <laughs> Small smooth brains think lawful means the literal sense as in following the law, but instead what it really means is having a strict set of rules, whether it be true moral, legal or because your boss is telling you to do it. It's one of the most predictable alignments. 99% of the time when a lawful character sets out to do something through a promise or obligation, they actually follow through, which is why they make great fitness instructors, because when they say they're not going to fuck your mom, they actually don't fuck your mom. A lawful good act is keeping the promise because it's the right thing to do. A lawful neutral keeps the promise because it is a promise and they're going to stick by it even mm -hmm. if fucking your mom saves the universe. And a lawful evil keeps the promise because they're going to fuck your dad instead since you technically didn't say anything about him okay 
Inversely, the chaotic side of the TARD are for characters that don't give a fuck about their integrity and do whatever the hell they want because they feel like it. Small True. smooth brains will use this alignment as an excuse to be a total wang rod and have an inconsistent character with no definable traits. Also known as the chaotic alignment's more recognizable cousin, the stupid alignment, with its constant there wacky lull so random XD approach to playing their <laughs> character. The most common examples of chaotic acts are lying, cheating, and stealing, aka part of a rogue's balanced breakfast. A chaotic good is stealing from the rich and giving to the less fortunate. A chaotic neutral cheats to win a tournament and uses the winnings to eat something aside from a bread sandwich every night. And a chaotic evil will lie about not fucking your dad again and then burst into his bedroom as soon as you blink like a really slutty weeping angel. <laughs> <laughs> The good and evil sides of the alignment chart are pretty straightforward. Good mm -hmm. is if you're a good person, and evil if you're a jackass. But that's a small, smooth brain surface level understanding of good oh. and evil. As in, no, just because you don't stab people doesn't mean not stabbing them is a good act just because stabbing them is a lot easier. Good acts are ones that go out of the character's way to do good and help others, sometimes even to the good person's detriment, and oftentimes even if there's no promise of any sort of reward in return for the act. Like using mm -hmm. your own hand to get a friend's favorite Lego set out of the toilet, even after a night of really spicy curry. In contrast, evil Ugh. is pretty straightforward, i.e. actions that could actively harm people or not caring about how those actions could knowingly harm people. An evil act would be being the person who threw the Lego set into the toilet, knowing full well it could be somebody's favorite. But good and evil does- You see, that's Disney evil. And Disney evil is really hard to come by nowadays. It doesn't just mean motives, it means methods, too. And just because you have nice ends doesn't mean having mean means makes it any less mean. Example, you've caught a kidnapper and need to find out where they're hiding their captive so you can save them. A good act could be offering some snacks and a binge watch of their favorite show in return for information, whereas an evil act would be chopping their nipples off. Okay. The neutral cross of the alignment chart is for players who are terrified of commitment and refers to acts that either don't fall on either side of the good, evil, or lawful, chaotic side of the spectrum, or characters that are horse for choice and like to do whatever tickles their pickle the most, depending on the situation. Maybe they'll be employee of the month for one boss and then shit on the desk of their next. Basically, the go. neutral ends of the alignment chart are the most pure and concentrated, like the curvature of my butt cheeks, and do basically anything and everything that could be considered the essence of that side of the chart. And of course, the middle ground, true neutral, aka the one that's always playing devil's advocate for literally everything, like they spend 10 hours a day discussing opinions on Reddit. And there you have the totally accurate, totally objective descriptions for each side of the alignment chart with no room for any other interpretations whatsoever. And if anyone tries to argue otherwise, they can suck fat nards. Also, never let players pick their own alignment, because when they do, it actually looks like this. But that's totally because I'm such a Gemini, and we don't think people are self-aware enough to be able to categorize themselves without being subconsciously influenced by their own personal biases. Okay. And now you know how to use alignment. You're welcome. Back when I started playing in 2nd edition, Chaotic Neutral was considered the, um, if you can pick Chaotic Neutral, you were insane. Like, that that's what's going on in your character's brain. You were, you were legitimately nutso. Um, True Neutral, you were borderline. So that's just how, the, that's just how that whole thing was played. So you were either a law, you were either Chaotic Good or, you know, you get told you got told in my first few games you know there are nine alignments to tr choose from in reality you could only really pick four and that would be lawful good lawful neutral uh chaotic good uh, and um oh my god my brain uh I'm sorry guys, neutral, like, my brain is shot, it is so shot, I have been feeling so sorry today, it's not even funny, but there was only two, there was only really four alignments to choose from out of the top left of that entire spectrum, the top row and then the lawful neutral, you could not play anything else, because if you played true neutral, you were going to get, it was a deal, if you played chaotic neutral, it was a deal, it was just a whole ridiculous deal. My first DM was really good about that kind of stuff. He didn't really mind that too much or anything like that. My second DM was really, really, really weird about the whole thing. Um, he just had his... He just had a re He had brain rot, I believe. He had serious brain rot. But not so much my first DM that I started playing with. No. Uh, Warpugs, don't let anybody tell you what alignment you are. If you're a bastard, you're a bastard. You're evil. If you're a good person, you're a good person. You're good. Yay! I don't fit well into categories. Guys, I'm going to take off out of here. One of these days, I will get to play the chaotic, neutral, thief I've always wanted to play. 
Or I might actually get to play an assassin one of these days, but that'll probably never happen because my life is... It is cringe. It is very cringe, and I am sad. And I will never get to play the edgelord that I truly want to play. I'm sad. More pugs. Check the links in the description below. Join as a member or patron, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. And I'm going to go feel absolutely miserable because my stomach will not leave me alone.